to the next section that is we're going to reply. I know we, you asked a lot of questions. So now I'm so excited. This is the most excited part of these events. And I have here with me three professors with me. And I would like to introduce them first. We have a uh, Professor Higuchi Takehiro. We have Professor Hasegawa Makomoto. And we have Professor Ota Hiroki. So now I would like to ask Professor Ota first to pick up some of the question and reply to the students. Please, Professor Ota, the panel is yours. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, introduction. So uh, thank you for many uh, questions, but uh, because of the time, I answer three questions. Uh, first one is the uh, application of the uh, stretchable sensors. So uh, actually the stretchable electronics or stretchable sensor is very new uh, technology. So that was a lot of researcher is thinking about the good applications actually. So that was uh, actually I want uh, I want to get the good applications for the sense, uh, stretchable sensors. But uh, I can uh, give you the, uh, a few examples. One is uh, uh, we can detect the uh, condition of the building using the stretchable sensor. And the uh, other one is uh, um, we can uh, detect the uh, health condition of the small animals like uh, uh, pets. So because as you know, the uh, pet is uh, one of the family. So that was uh, uh, we want to know uh, the health condition of the pet. And another one is, uh, of course, medical for the human. Um, actually, uh, we are developing the few uh, applications for the medical uh, ap medical applications. And uh, this is first question. And the second one is the size of the uh, strain sensor. Uh, actually, the, uh, we are making, we make the strain sensor using the printing method. So that was uh, we can make a uh, uh, Metascale, metascale sensors. Uh, if we can uh, use appropriate fabrication process, uh, actually we are trying to uh, building build the uh, uh, production process for large scale. And the third one, uh, last one, is uh, uh, the how my research contribute to the medical healthcare uh, healthcare. So actually, the uh, for example. Uh, we are making the uh, sensors using the neonate for the neonates. So because the skin of the neonate is very fragile and soft. So actually the stretchable sensor is very ultra soft. So that's why the, uh, this is fit with the, uh, the condition of the uh, neonate scale, neonatal skin. So this is my research. So thank you for your, your listening. So thank you very much, Professor Ota. Next, I would like to ask Professor Higuchi, please could you pick up some of the questions and reply to them? All right, uh, thank you, Jibel san um, I'm Higuchi, uh, studying about the aerospace stuff. Um, I would like to answer several questions. And one is from, I think, Shamil Arif says, do students that or currently studying aerospace participate in any big project or competition. And it's hard to mention about what's big and what's not big. And actually, you know, you can see my wearing, I have this um, project jacket uh, with me. It's, oh, we'll show you the back of it. Um, there's a, it's called a SLIM project. And um, we're collaborating with the, um, Japanese Aerospace uh, Agency. And some of the students uh, who did graduate are, um, well, the lab did work on this project. And this satellite is aimed to land on the moon, which should be a big project. And they did design um, like the guidance and control um, strategy to land the, um, this satellite on the moon. So, well, it depends on when you're here. Like it's gonna be launched next year, and uh, right now we are not doing anything. It's already in a, in the production phase, so we don't have anything to do with it. But um, so if you're lucky, then you might have chance to get into the big project as well. All right. The next question was, I'll say, the are there any international students in your lab, and 
I would say right now we don't have any international students. Um, basically, we do have some. Um, this year we don't, but like last year, uh, one of the students just graduated uh, the master's course. And yeah, so we do have the international students uh, pretty much. And one of the things I could say about, well, it's special about my um, field that the the graduate, the international graduate students, um, it's hard to um, work in the heavy industries, such as the, um, you know, the manufacturing of the rockets or the airplanes that, you know, they do relate some kind of, um, you know, um, the field that affects the international uh, relation. But for the, for they say satellites and the other stuff are, well, there are students that, you know, is working well. And like last year, the person who graduated uh, uh, lab has gone into the, um, the, the car company, uh, not gonna tell you which, but um, he is now working for the car company. And maybe for the last question, um, says how high is the flying altitude of the drone that transports something? Um, it does depend on uh, what you're doing. Um, basically, right now, the Japanese law uh, prohibit uh, the drones flying over 150 meters high. So if you're 150 meters or low, uh, you could fly around. Oh, depends on the place. Um, if, it, if it's a metropolitan area, um, you're not um, allowed to fly yet. Oh, I think the law is gonna be changed soon. Um, but so the 150 meters, uh, the limit. But if you um, actually ask the, um, the certain uh, agency, then you could fly higher than 150 as well. Um, say you wanna carry the actual people, then you have to fly 150 meters or high. So that's gonna be the answer. All right, um, that's the, all the questions I had to um, answer. So thank you very much. So thank you very much, Professor Hibuchi. Now I will move to the, our last panelist and I will call Professor Hasegawa. Could you pick up some of the question and reply to them? Sure. Okay, thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, I, I selected two questions. Well, first one. <laughs> Moving, where is it? Uh, first one is, is ceramic uh, commonly used cutting material? So of course in a usual use uh, such kind of mild environment, uh, it's not so much used for cuttings for the ceramic, it's not used, but uh, when we think about the cars or the bicycle, uh, painting is enough because our environment is not harsh. But when we think about the high temperature jet engine or a Tabarota, it's a very high temperature and some additional elements will come in. So at that time, ceramic, which is hard and also which has a high temperature insulating uh, uh, potential and ceramics such as uh, zirconia. It is a zirconium oxide and also alumina, aluminum oxide or other materials, which are very uh, expensive, are used for the protecting the material. So that is the first question, answer of the question. Uh, uh, yeah. In case of very famous thing, when we think say that the ceramic glass as a ceramic, if you have a smartphone, it has a protection of the glass, hard glass, but it has a possibility to use a uh, ceramic coating also. It is because it has much more tough uh, than it, if it is much more transparent. Uh, when we use uh, our technology, aerosol deposition, it is possible to produce such kind of thin layer. Uh, this will be um, became a very famous uh, common ceramic coating. So this is a answer of first question. And in case of second question, uh, 
other than jet engine, what can you use your research for? Could I have any examples? So, yes, I have talked about the bulk material for the orange engine control. Uh, we, I have talked mainly about the titanium aluminide. Uh, yes, it is mainly used for the jet engine of the low pressure turbine blade, but, but formerly, in a cars, there was used for the turbocharger, and also uh, it is thought to use for the brake disc. And recently, it is used in iron, but it's still heavy. Density is roughly seven or eight. But when we think about the titanium aluminide, it is roughly four, so it is half of the density. So it is one application for the uh, for using uh, brake disc and. And in case of my coatings, uh, I have talked about uh, environmental barrier coatings. It, it is also used for jet engine to, uh, to protect turbine blade, but also not only in case of jet engine, it is also used for the cutting tool. Uh, and also is used for uh, ultra high temperature ceramic. It is used for the reentry aircraft and also for the high temp high velocity uh, aircrafts. It is used for the nose or some other parts, which will be which will became roughly 2,500 2, degrees C or so in order to protect such kind of region. Uh, uh, zirconium diboride or such kind of uh, ultra high temperature ceramic having much high uh, melting temperature, uh, melting painter temperature material. Uh, it is used for, our, for the coating. So I think this is all for my second question. So thank you. So thank you very much, Professor Asegawa. Now, I think we did not, due to the time limitation, we have got many questions, but we are not able to reply all of them. And I pick up some of the question I would like to reply now. So some students ask me why I did, why I choose to study at Yokohama National University. Well, as a foreigner student here in Japan, I think studying in a very high quality education why I knew one of the opportunity I have when I was in undergrad, I chose to study here. And I got support from my supervisor for doing my master course. And I have opportunity also to travel a lot of country for going conference and a lot of support from my professor. And I really have a good support here. And also studying here also, you have opportunity to cooperate with other, other foreign students. There is many foreign students and you can make friends easily. And also Japanese students are very friendly. And we have a very nice environment here before the COVID-19. So now I will talk about the, some students ask me, well, what, what is the most difficult things in studying at YNU or living in Japan? So these questions are very tricky. Most difficult things at studying at YNU, maybe I may say, in Japan, if you live here, if you don't speak Japanese, it's very hard to live here in this country. And I have experience when I was new here, I even like on the street asking people, can you help me sometime? It's very hard because people don't speak English in general. So Japanese is a tool you can use on living in Japan that will facilitate a lot of things. And about studying difficulties I found here in studying at YNU, maybe I can say, like sometimes we have, we don't have like opportunity to organize like some events. That is one of the things I found like it's not difficult to nowadays. Like many students are facing some stress related to lack of activities and to cooperate together. So I hope maybe after the, after the COVID it will get better. So that is what I choose. But difficulty about living here also, Maybe like I'm from a hot country. When I came here also, I like face like it was very in summer, it's a very hot, more than hot my, my country. My country is hot, but I found here like very hot in the summer. 
And another thing also during the winter, so I faced like a heat, uh, like a summer, it was very cold for me and it's very hot. So you may be prepared to find a lot of clothes you may use when you live in Japan. So that is what I wanted to notify. So thank you very much.